Okay, we're gonna take a look at how we can take the derivative of an inverse function. Take a look at the function y equals x squared. We'll restrict the domain to be greater than or equal to zero. Uh, we need to do that to make this function one to one since we're going to be looking at an inverse function. We can take the derivative, we get two x. When x equals two, the y value is four and the slope is also four. And now we're gonna take a look at the inverse function. So to come up with the inverse, we have y equals x squared, switch x and y, and get y by itself. So our inverse function is the square root of x. We can look at the derivative of the inverse function. So the derivative of the inverse is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, or 1 over 2 root x. Now recall that if we have an inverse function, if a point x, y exists on the function f, then those x and y coordinates are switched for the function f inverse of x. So when x equals four, our y value is two. And the derivative at four is one fourth. So here's the relationship we wanna look at. We have two, four on the original function. We have four, two on the inverse function. The slope is four at that point on the original and one fourth on the inverse. Okay, so this is the pattern we always observe. The derivative of the inverse function evaluated at x equals f of a. So f of a would be the y value from the original function is equal to one over the derivative of the original function at x equals a. So I call these corresponding points, the points two, four, and four, two would be corresponding points and the derivatives at those points are reciprocals. So here's some information you might see. f of three equals five. The derivative of f at three equals six. We wanna find the derivative of the inverse at five. We'll notice that we have the point three, five for the original function. So if we're looking at an inverse function, we would have the point five, three. Those are the corresponding points and the derivative at that corresponding point would be the reciprocal. So it'd be one sixth. Okay, we know that a function has an inverse if it's only if it is one to one. We know that if a function is one to one, it passes the horizontal line test. So one half x cubed is one to one, one half x squared is not one to one. And what you notice is if a function is not one to one, it fails the horizontal line test, somewhere there it has to turn around, meaning somewhere the slope has to be zero. So we have this theorem that if a function is differentiable at every point on an interval, and if the derivative is never zero, then it must have an inverse. And this makes sense because if there is not an inverse, somewhere it has to change direction. And if it changes direction, the derivative would be zero. So let's use this theorem to answer this question. Does y equals, si equals sine of x plus 1.1x have an inverse? Well, we can take the derivative cosine of x plus 1.1 and ask ourselves the question, is this derivative ever equal to zero? And since cosine of x is never smaller than negative one, the answer is no, it is never equal to zero. So it must pass the horizontal line test. It must have an inverse. If we graph it, we can see that it never completely gets down to a slope of zero. The smallest the slope ever gets to be is 0.1 and then it starts going up again. Okay, we're gonna to try to derive some formulas here, um, the derivative of inverse sine. And the way we're going to do that is by using implicit differentiation. So instead of y equals inverse sine of x, we can say sine of y equals x. And we know how to take this derivative. The derivative of sine is cosine times the derivative of the inside, which is dy dx. The derivative of x is one. So dy dx equals one over cosine of y. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, one of our trig identities, sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And let's isolate cosine. Since we know that y is between negative pi over two and pi over two in order for this uh, function to have an inverse, we know that 
cosine then must be positive. So we can drop that plus or minus and just deal with the square root. So we replace cosine of y with the square root of 1 minus sine squared. But if we refer down to that second line right there, we have sine of y equals x. So this is the same as 1 over root 1 minus x squared. So this is our derivative for inverse sine. We could do the same thing for the rest of these. Uh, we have all six of our inverse functions. The good news is the only three that I will require you to have memorized are inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. The other three may show up in homework assignments, and if you need them, um, you can look back in your notes or you can look in your purple packet because uh, they're listed there in the supplemental section at the back of your packet. But those last three, inverse cotangent, inverse secant, inverse cosecant, you do not have to have memorized.